Hey everyone, this is Mark Schillinger, founder of the nonprofit Young Men's Ultimate Weekend. Young Men's Ultimate Weekend is a wilderness rite of passage adventure camp for young men ages 13 to 20. We've had thousands of young men from all different economic, academic, social, racial, and um, athletic backgrounds successfully graduate from our event. And essentially, this is a rite of passage that signals to young men that it's time to make a healthy transition from the comforts of boyhood to the challenges of young adulthood. Tonight, you're gonna to meet a couple of men who have contributed so much to the success of the Young Men's Ultimate Weekend. And their goal, as it is for all the highly trained mentors that we have, is to help young men make that transition to deal with the challenges of young adulthood. So let me introduce you to two of my close friends and men who've been with YMEW basically since the beginning, John Zyder and Greg Benton. Um, John, would, if you would take a moment, John has um, basically been serving in the role as production team manager, and Greg has essentially been event manager. Um, if you wouldn't mind, John, just taking a moment to tell everybody what a PTM is, and, and then I'll have Greg go over what an event manager is, and then I want to kind of jump into the details of these jobs, and especially for our viewers, how it relates to parenting, because I know the parents who are going to watch this basically want to know is what can they teach me to, about my sons that I don't know. Okay. So Jay-Z, if you want to jump in a little bit about what a PTM is, I'd love to hear about it. Perfect. So bottom line, production team manager, you know, starts with production. So even though you have an event and you have a lot of young men, you have a lot of volunteers come together, that production team that actually builds the props around the weekend. So I used to tell people that if you went to the theater and you were sitting in the seat and you looked up and there was the actors, you know, up on stage, well, I'm part of the team that actually makes sure the curtain goes up, comes down, that the stage is all set, all the props, all the components, so that the participants, the one in the audience, get the full feel and running of what YMEW is about, which is young men. Yeah. Yeah, the father's going to interpret what John said is... Like I've been an event manager and a ringmaster uh, on the agenda side, we like to call it. Without people like John there, nothing happens because we can have the best ideas, but he's the one who really makes things, people show up, the equipment show up, orchestrates everything behind all the scenes. So um, I will have a funny story to tell about that later, about uh, how John had to keep me in line. The young man were fine. It was, I was the one who was out of line. And um, you will get to hear that. You can see he's already agreeing so easily. Um, Greg, Benton, you want to tell us a little bit about Event Manager and how you would relate to your job and all the years that you've been doing that? Well, sure. I, um, I've always held it as the, the position where uh, everything, everything, everything uh, is my responsibility. So I'm at the top of the weekend and I'm uh, charged with making sure that the agenda of the weekend and the purpose of the weekend are delivered to the young men. Uh, I also feel responsible for the volunteers who come and for the process of registration, enrollment. Uh, I, really, uh, I really take it all. And how I do this, so it's not, I'm not doing it all, but I'm just making sure that it's getting done and that there are men, men available and, and the right men in, in, in the right place to do all the various things that need to be done to prepare for a weekend. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we have an 18 week timeline to gather all the men together to make the announcement that there's a, an initiation coming and start gathering the young men together and families the materials, get a site, all that stuff that needs to happen to put together the, the production that John's talking about. Right. One of the things I'd like to do is for a moment is like to see if this is at all possible about parenting. Um, because we are parents ourselves, but we, you know, oversee young men as well. Just to give some advice for parents, like on the one hand, for you folks who are watching, like what Greg is talking about is like, he's the big picture. He's got to make sure he's like the visionary guy. He's got to make sure the vision's getting done. 
And then John is kind of like the detail guy. Like he knows exactly what's what and where it's got to go and when it's got to be there. How would you relate that in your own ways to parenting? Because I know some parents tend to be more big picture people like me. They're not good at details. Some are more, uh, you know, better at details and, you know, parents can clash. I kind of see like, you know, both are needed. How would you relate how you, John, and you, Greg, work together, you know, as a, an event manager, a big picture person and a detail person, you know, at the weekend, you know, what's that like? Cause you have to exchange information. You got to talk, you got to agree or disagree. And then maybe somehow we could relate that to parenting in a moment, but just if you wouldn't mind, John, like, what's it like working with somebody who's got the bigger picture and you've got to, you've got to hear them and yet you got to carry it out. Hmm. Sounds like being married. Sounds like being married. How so? Pray tell. <laughs> well, what, what, what pops in my mind is, is that um, when you're work, when you're married, you have a spouse and you have things that you like and understand together. And then there's different uh, things that you like separately and you have some people you hang out with and there's times that you hang out together and a marriage is uh, uh, in a partnership is brought together by being respectful to what somebody has to say. Um, also, you know, speaking your voice when you can. Um, and then also if you get mad, you know, you get mad and you kind of walk away, take a deep breath and you come back to it. Um, and so it's a give and take kind of pool. And again, when you have a bigger purpose right. of what you're doing, then it all comes together, whether it's a big vision, a small vision, um, and parenting is like that too. So when uh, a couple gets together and they decide that they're going to have a child, they're now going to bring that child into the world and they have a huge responsibility. And what's big is that that responsibility is to help nurture and have that child grow and at the same time, you still have that vision of like, oh, I want to get to retirement. You know, one time I don't want to work anymore and, you know, get my kid through college. You know, those are all those vision things that you work together. And I think that when we come back to this production level between, you know, event manager, production team manager, even the ringmaster, is that we all know that we have a part to play. And we have to be respectful to each other, but we're all guiding each other together to make sure that these young men who are at the weekend are learning honor what is right. You know, being respectful, intelligent, humor, true, gallantry. Mm -hmm. So that, 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 to me, that's how it really works. Sure. There's two things that I'm hearing you say that I think parents should hear. So I appreciate your points. Number one, parents have to have a bigger purpose than just their own agenda for what their kids need. They have to agree on what the purpose is. And I know in our work, we actually write out purpose statements. So I get that. The other thing I'm hearing you say is that we have a way at the Young Men's Ultimate Weekend, we're all, we're like a tribe, right? We actually have a shared set of values or standards that I know you guys would call them that we have to abide by. So when you have a big purpose and you have standards, it makes it easier to lead your children versus everybody making stuff up on the spot. We would never be able to carry off a YMEW if everybody made stuff up. And you then made another key point about there's give and take. And ultimately, it's going to come down to the big purpose. If it's going to serve the purpose, yes. If it's not, no. So those are great points already. Um, Greg, for you, anything about how you see the relationship between event manager, the big picture person, and being responsible for it all, and yet nothing's going to happen without the detail person? Anything you want to say about that? Well, I, you know, there's so much to do and so much that has to happen. Uh, during a weekend that um, you need to have people who are focused on various, the various parts. And as the various parts are coming together and everybody's working together, I feel it as event manager, my responsibility to pay attention to the, to the agenda. Mm -hmm. And because not everybody's thinking about that. And, uh, you know, I like to be the keeper of the agenda. So, if John is putting together uh, something and I'm watching the timeline and I'm, I'm seeing that uh, we need to, we have something coming up here that we need to get this done and can gently <laughs> prod someone to get it done, you know? Or if something 
uh, can't be done, then I can play with the agenda. Mm -hmm. But it's not really for the PTM, and especially not for the ringmaster to be really thinking about the agenda. Maybe more the PTM, but uh, I like to make sure that there's somebody watching out for the agenda and the timeline and looking at uh, the bigger picture of not of where do we need to be an hour from now, but where do we need to be three hours from now. So there's something we better get started. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I also know that as we're relating it to parenting, I'm just learning something as you guys are speaking. Typically, in, a, in most parenting situations, I think, at least in my coaching experience now of all these years, one of the parents is usually good at, at sort of the big picture, and then one is usually good at administration, which you both know I suck at administration. And so I appreciate the teamwork you have to have because somebody has to be good at the details. And I was making some notes here about, like, I think a lot of families struggle, but especially now there's so much going on with technology and now with COVID. It's like, it takes a lot to run a family. And if they don't have a, a way, and if they don't have a purpose, and if they don't have somebody who's good at details, it's going to be challenging. That's kind of what I'm hearing you say, Greg. It's like, you know, you have to be, you have to know what's going on, you know, and, and right. all the parents have so much going on. We all have, as parents and, you know, individuals, we have so much going on and under so much stress ourselves. It seems like it's almost impossible to run a household if you don't have things organized well. Right. And things change. You know, during the weekend, mm -hmm. things change, and this is this is where uh, the PTMs really are that kind of guy who can be uh, no problem, and and uh, change gears and address the change, mm -hmm. and you still get us where we need to be. Yep, you mentioned a really important term. I want the viewers to know that we have operated for all these twenty years with the context of no problem, meaning. If something needs to get done and it fills the purpose, somebody's going to do it. How would you guys relate to that? Like we actually, parents will say to me, like after a weekend, they'll call me and go, you know, Mark, how come my son is now like making his bed? He's actually brushing his teeth. He's actually doing the dishes. You know, what would you say is the magic of having young men watching people like you, the production team manager and the event manager and a ringmaster and the ringmaster is the guy who's actually in charge of, you know, right in front of the young men. What impact do you think that has on the young men watching adult men have a no problem attitude and get shit done because it's got to get done? Have you ever watched the young men? How, do you even think about how they relate to watching you guys at all? You know, getting stuff done with no problem. Anyone of you guys want to comment about that? Well, we all know they're watching. Mm -hmm. And they're what they're watching all the time. True. So I, uh, so we just, all we need to think about is doing it and behaving in a no problem way. We don't have to lecture them or tell them about it, what we're doing or anything. They just see it. Yeah. I think one of the best stories about this kind of thing that I just now thought of was we were getting near the end of the weekend and we're starting to think about graduation on Sunday and how we're gonna do it. And the site was a little problematic anyway in terms of its layout, and now it's going to start raining. If you remember that, uh, we had a good hour to figure that out, mm -hmm. and actually got. I was so amazed. We they got all these tarps up and created a canopy in the woods. Of I remember that. And we just made it work, and there was nobody. I, you know, I don't remember hearing anybody saying there was a problem. Right. Right. It's, it's really important that young men see that. And I think they do, you know, parenting is still monkey see, monkey do. I mean, mm -hmm. I teach a brain science course for doctors on the brain science of stress management. I know a little bit about the nervous system. It's like parenting has not changed. Parenting is based on one feature that's really important about human brains, mimicking, copying, and repeating. And when those young men see you guys operating on that no problem attitude the whole weekend, I'm not surprised that some of them go home and just take that attitude with them. You know, it's beautiful. So, John, um, anything you want to add to that about what Greg was saying about this no problem attitude that the young men observe us doing? Yeah, you know, I was thinking uh, emulation, where young men are looking at uh, us and are absorbing, you know, what we're doing 
And what we're doing is, is that um, uh, we're being respectful to each other. We're, you know, doing things with a no problem attitude, uh, taking things uh, and getting them done and having fun. And, and sometimes, you know, being a little angry, but just really having fun. And so they're looking at that and saying to themselves, you know, that's kind of how I want to be. And, you know, they, as young men are hanging out with their young men. Yep. And so they feel it's like totally cool to go and watch ridiculous and do some crazy stuff. And uh, now they're seeing a group of men actually performing and guiding together. Now, I, you know, I commend the parents for a hard job that they have, which is, you know, raising uh, their son because their job is to train and prepare their son for life. And they have to work and go shopping and cook and laundry and all that. And we are just helping that along by having that community around them. And those young men get to see what men are really doing in the community. Mm -hmm. And they want to be like that. And so we're here to support the parents. You know, I remember, you know, growing up. And I was out with my friends and we were just around the corner and we were doing something stupid, like throwing rocks or something. And then one of my neighbor's parents, you know, came out and said, Hey, don't be doing that. Da, 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 da. And it's like, Whoa, okay. Look, we're, we're being watched everywhere. We're doing something. And that's the community being involved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, today, even myself, I walk my dog and in the morning in high school, I walk past like 10 students and I would say hi to most of them. And they had their earplugs in and their phone in front of them. And I get one to maybe nod their head and one would go, oh, good morning. I, I mean, it's, it's amazing. They're really distracted. They're being distracted. And I contend that that's the number one reason why parents are having such a hard time raising their sons now because of the devices. Okay. Now, speaking of devices and no problem, I just want to tell a quick story here. At the very first Young Men's Ultimate Weekend, I knew that my son was going to be there. That's why we started this whole thing, because I needed help raising my son. I need guys like John and many other guys to help me. So we ended up with 205 young dudes there. We had about 60 volunteers, right? And I had this vision that when I arrived at the site, because I was down at registration, I was waiting for the last parent, the last young men to register. So I drove up and I expected to get to the site and I expected to see John Zyder and uh, the ringmaster, Mitch DeArmond, and everybody else, like, you know, leading the young men, right? And I get up there, and, like, everybody's sitting. And I'm, like, freaked out. And I look at my son, and he's sitting there, like, I knew I shouldn't have come to this crap. This is terrible, right? And we had this guy who was a runner, right? We never had the expression, a runner, right? We had a young man. I guess he was tripping on some drugs or something. And those guys told me that we had the, we just started our first ever young men's weekend and already somebody ran away into the woods. Right. And it was amazing because of course I wanted to freak out and, you know, lose it. And these guys had the most amazing, no problem attitude. They went after the young guy. They took care of him when they found him, they walked him back. They never made him wrong. They just wanted him to feel comfortable. All the young men saw that. And that's how the YMUW began because these guys showed me a no problem attitude, which as John will tell you now, throughout the weekend, this is the first weekend, right? It's 205 young men. We were expecting like maybe 10 or 20. We had no money for advertising. We had no idea it was gonna show up, right? And all these young men were doing stuff, the volunteers, we were just, it was a little crazy. And I had a walkie talkie because I was one of the guys running the show. Well. My job was to communicate to John, like, what the hell's going on? Or what? Like, I was so outrageous. At one, and everybody could hear me yelling at John. At one point, I think it was John said, just take away his walkie-talkie, right? Which they did. And in place, they gave me this. This little plastic walkie-talkie. This is what I got because I was the only one who could not carry on a no problem attitude. Do you remember that? I'll never forget it. <laughs> if, you, if you want to talk about blocking communication <laughs> and not allowing things to move forward, you know, <laughs> and keeping people spinning, just give Mark a walkie talkie. Because the one thing Mark knew how to do was hold the button and talk 
And then when he was done talking, hold the button. So you couldn't even respond to him. It was just that difficult. So in turn, we had to give him a non-working walkie talkie. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe 20 plus years later, he still has it. Well, because I'm, I'm still in therapy for this. I, you guys crushed me. I had never recovered. And so I carried around with me with my little blink picky blanket. Okay, let's get, let's, let's return to you guys. Um, you guys are in front of men all the time, okay? Now, we know in this society, like there's some men who misbehave and don't do good by the rest of the world. I really want to ask you a serious question because you have led many men, both of you. What do you find is great about working with men? Even the challenging stuff, like what, what good can you say about men? Because you've been in front of men who never even met you. Now they're taking orders from you. What else do you know about men that's actually positive, wonderful? What have your experiences been working with men? And either one of you just jump in, please. Well, I would say with working with men, the number one thing that pops out is how big of a heart they have. You know, they, they really, really care about what they're doing and how they're doing something. And a lot of times what happens is the ego gets in the way and they have to have that, you know, big, uh, you know, man kind of situation. Um, and we, we all have that. And uh, what's great about being around men is that if you really point out where their heart is, then a lot of that stuff fades away. And when you get the heart and they get that purpose, it's so hard to stop them. Yeah. Simple as that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Greg, anything else? Well, I, I agree. It, um, what I found from my sort of positions that I've held is that, um, you know, there's so many different men. Of course, men are men, but there really are quite, quite different bit of differences and uh, in where they came from and their upbringing um, and, you know, whatever they're dealing with in their life. And, I, you know, we're seeing in at, at the productions at the uh, YMBWs, we're seeing men who have come and are, we're seeing their best for the most part mm -hmm. because they know and they've come seeking purpose to do something with a purpose and uh, perhaps even something that can be part of their legacy as men. True. And so they tend to give their best. Beautiful. And um, plus they know they're around other men. And so they tend to behave a little bit, <laughs> you know, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And they know that they're, they're part of a, a team and that they're part of uh, a gathering of men where there are standards mm -hmm. and some men come thinking what standards what's that mm -hmm. and they start to, to find out and see that standards are good yeah and uh, you, like, they even don't they even want to be held accountable okay this is very and they, they they act like not but really um they uh more than likely do so this is so much about parenting. Like, I want to ask you about, like, how do you motivate men or how not to motivate men? And already you're kind of answering that question, Greg. And like, how can parent, what, what would you tell parents not to do? Like, what have you learned about ways not, you know, to avoid with men? Otherwise, they're going to give you the big finger and not do it. And it's pretty analogous, I would think, to parents and their sons. What, what one thing or more would you say for parents not to do? If they think they're going to try to motivate their sons to do something and you know it's not going to work that you've learned by working with men anything there or with your own kids what doesn't work motivating men or young men for that matter what doesn't work hmm i i, I would say that um power has to come within you and when you know that somebody is stuck or somebody is uh, angry or somebody doesn't know what they're supposed to do and you demand or you get emotional, um, you know, and I'm, I'm 
famous for doing things like that. Um, and at the same time, I'm also really good at certain points where that water just runs down the back, just like a duck, you know, and everything that comes at you just moves slowly past you instead of fast, like a brick in the face, um, that, that kind of, you know, situation. And so I think a lot of times for young men, they just, they don't know. Mm -hmm. And so when they don't know, they're pausing and waiting and so where you think they may be defiant, they're actually not sure what to do. Um, and then some young men, um, they don't do anything other than scream and yell and want to throw things. Um, and that is the exact same emotion as the other one. And it's, it's more about your reaction to it. Mm -hmm. And so I think for me, there's there's, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little story. We, we were just done with the sweat lodge and there was uh, one of our managers and uh, somebody else and the young men had left. And we had a rule that you were not supposed to smoke unless you were smoking in a designated area if you're the right age. And we were standing there and, the, and one goes, hey, can I get a smoke? And they both took a cigarette, boom, lit it up. And I gave them the most evil eye you can think of. And they kind of paused and looked at me like, what? And I said, no smoking. Mm -hmm. And I turned around and walked away. And I've never seen somebody put a cigarette out as fast as they did. And probably two, three hours later, they walked up to me and, and thanked me mm -hmm. for reminding them of the standards and that their addiction was overcoming their purpose. Right. So I hear you, I'm identifying a couple of things because I appreciate what you're pointing out. When we train mentors, we always say like, don't nag the young men, right? No yeah, nagging, yeah. right? That's what I'm hearing you say in part. And also respecting that a young man may not know and not know how to ask for help. So one of the things at the YMEW, I know that we're always preaching is like, ask for help, including many times at the weekend, we'll, we'll hear shouting in the middle of something going on. It's a man way in the woods shouting out for help. So I appreciate that you're saying like, sometimes they don't know what to do and they won't ask for help. We won't beat them up. We won't, we won't nag them. We'll just try to give them the space to ask for help. And then you said the last thing with your, with your smoking story about, I think young men respect certainty. And I think adult men respect certainty. So if you're a parent and you're vague, you're wishy-washy, you're making shit up on the spot. I don't see men or young men that I coach respecting that. So that's how I'm taking your story about the, the certain, yeah. you know, you were certain and that was it. And that's all the guy needed. And that was, uh, you know, uh, what, what I like, what I liked about it was that John just stated a fact mm -hmm. and there was really no, there was no, I don't know about the look, but the, there was no, no judgment mm -hmm. in what he said. It's just a fact. And you, you respected, uh, another young, uh, another human beings autonomy. Right. And uh, oftentimes when we do do those, you know, in parenting, especially that other thing, that is anything that's going to give the perception of reducing their autonomy, they're going to rebel against that because mm -hmm. they're all about autonomy. And so John let them make a decision on their own based on a fact that they were given. Beautiful. Right. So you stated it and then they got it and they just did it. Because here's what I find being, being at the YMEW, and we've talked about this before, like they just want to be like dudes. They just want to do the same things as adult men. We want to brag. We want to boast. We want to be at our best. I think you were saying that before, Greg, like they're on their best behavior. Like they want to, they want to conquer. They want to win. And I think what we do really good, especially you men in your leadership positions, which as you said, they're watching all the time. They, they want to be the big dog and they need to be around men like us who are, are the big dogs, but we're doing it with fun, but we have these standards and we're all making the standards. So I'd love for you to speak to this thing about standards and no special cases. I think this is important for parents to learn at the YMEW. When you guys are leading stuff, you may have one or two volunteers saying, well, I think we should do it this way, or I'm not going to do that because and if you're leading and you know it needs to, we need to go in that direction, you're not going to make a special case. And I think parenting right now, there's too many parents making special cases or allowances for their kids and break their own standards. 
you know, so I'd love for you to speak to that a little bit about how you can't always make a special case if you're going to lead your family or the YMEW in the right direction. Any, any feedback or comment about that? Mm. Wow. Special cases. Uh, special happens occasionally. Right. Occasionally. You know, um, occasionally. You know, like you have a special event. Uh, you have a... Uh, special birthday, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, th things that, um, it, and part of it, I think what it is, 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 is our society is saying that we have to be unique. We have to be special. We have to be different so that we could be, you know, on top of everything else, because being normal, um, and being similar to everybody else is no longer the status quo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, um, I don't even know a good example, but, Ultimately, I think that we all love our children and we want them to be better. And we want so much for them that we feel like we have to carve our way through. You know, a, a prime example is that there are a couple of famous people that chose to get their child into a university right. that they got rejected because they paid a bunch of money. And had a bunch of people lie to put them in there so that they could be special. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's right, you know, because there was other uh, young people that couldn't get in because of that. And what made them so special? You know, what, why did we carve or not us, but those parents mm -hmm. carved that out. I, I think that our biggest thing that we have today is that we want to talk about un unity and uniting together. Um, I think it's more about how can we cooperate? How can we all put in our two cents and be respectful to each other and still continue to move forward um, and not make everybody so special that we become a unique society instead of a, a, a mass society that works together? Right. I see it as a both end. We both need to have our authenticity because that's what yes. the right way for person to go to all about. And simultaneously, we all are required to conform to the standards of the family and the community. So I think they're both true. Yep. That's what I'm, I'm hearing you say. Um, Greg, I wanted to ask you a question because um, I know since you've led so many YMUWs, like why would you recommend that men volunteer? Like what would they get out of it? If, if men you know, have to leave the comforts of their home, just like the young men do, what's the value? What would you say you, you know, the men are going to get from volunteering at a YMEW or what do you get from it? Or why would you recommend that men get out into the woods for a couple of days and, as we would say in YMEW, fulfill their biological obligation to initiate young men? Uh, well, I can, I can certainly speak to what I've gotten out of it yeah. uh, mm -hmm. first. And um, uh, I've been... Uh, able to do things I never thought I could. And uh, I've learned a lot uh, about men and about young men and about community. And uh, got to practice leadership, yep. uh, which I've been able to use throughout my, in my career and in my personal life, all of these, these things. Um, and I've also feel that I'm I'm, built, I'm working up a legacy. Beautiful. And that um, it's, it's kind of that uh, saying about, you know, your, your job is not, a man's job is not done until he's trained his replacement. And that's what I feel we are out there doing as men. With the young men, we're training our replacements in the world to take the, to take the, the purpose that we uh, uh, found for ourselves in the world and to help them go find theirs. Beautiful. Yeah, it just seems like it's a naturally right thing for men to do and for women too, to help the next in line be successful at what they're gonna have to do. So that, that's a beautiful reason to show up, that's great. John, anything that is for you as far as what you get or why you'd recommend men go do this? So back at the beginning when we really was putting this together, 
And the focus was an agenda and, and a uh, place for the young men to come to. We also took some time and really thought about the volunteers. You know, what, what are the volunteers going to get out of this? Mm-hmm. And we, we created a uh, portion of, you know, volunteering is tapping into why somebody would volunteer. What are they looking to accomplish, you know, in a uh, emotional, spiritual uh, way that they can walk away with and obtain? And so by taking that element, um, we proposed it to, you know, the volunteers and they have that. And as a PTM, I was consciously watching each of the men as they were helping and doing or whatever was going through and then kept kind of tapping into that. And that when we got to the end of the weekend, that those volunteers really saw that they actually elevated themselves up and they got a lot from just being with other men, being with the young men and then volunteering. And so I I think that, um, that, that was a crucial thing for all of us that the weekend is about young men, it's about men, and it's about community. And so that we all walk away with something and knowing that when we go back home, we're gonna be more respectful, more intelligent, have some more fun and be treated true to who we are. Yeah, I've heard so many volunteers, you know, and back in the early days, John was like the volunteer coordinator. Like he really put a lot of heart and soul into making sure, uh, as we still do, from the precedent, he said, you know, that volunteers have a great experience. I think one thing that shows that uh, the leadership of the two of you and other, you know, great guys who've been leading over the years, we get so many repeat volunteers year after year after year. So you guys are doing something right leading these men. You know, they just keep coming back. So I think there's just yeah. something about that bonding, yeah? Yeah, they're just, they're they're addicts. They love it. Um, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> you know, they're, when, when, you, when you go and you actually let yourself go and follow a purpose and, and have support wherever you go, it's, it's great to have a community. Yep. And I think part of what happens in our society is that we're so individualized, um, you know, because we want to be special and we want to uh, be who we are. But in doing that, we also need to be in the community. And so I, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity to help reinforce us as individuals, you know, to be perfect. Yeah. The best yeah. that we can. One of, one of uh, my stories about getting involved that I used to tell was, uh, you know, a good, good longtime friend of mine went and did production and came back to our men's team and he talked about it. And so two more guys from the men's team uh, went and volunteered and that one of those was me. Uh, One of the things I was drawn to was the fact that I had a daughter who was newly a teenager and starting to bring some of these knuckleheads home, uh, friends, you know, boyfriends. And um, I, uh, that's how I refer to it. So, you know, further down the road, I'm an event manager and I'm talking at, uh, at the training day and I had this all whole circle of men there, and I decided to tell my story of what, what got me involved. Oh, I wanted to find out more about these knuckleheads and how to be with them and stuff. And I had forgotten that one of those knuckleheads was in the circle <laughs> and volunteered to be in production. So uh, I got called out on that. And yeah, year after year, guys keep coming back. It's because of the great effort you guys are putting in. Um, in a moment, I'm going to give you a chance to say any final words that you want to add or something new or different, anything about rite of passage or whatever you see for the future of families in the world, whatever it may be. I just want to remember before I forget, which I often do, for you folks who are watching, you want to find out more about Young Men's Ultimate Weekend, we have an 800 number, which is 800-719-9302. If you want to find out more about registering your son for the Young Men's Ultimate Weekend or volunteering, or just want to know more about what we do, you can email us at info at ymuw.org. 
800-719-9302, info at ymew.org. Um, any one of you want to have any final words or any thoughts or anything you want to say about anything related to the work we're doing or where the world is going or whatever you think uh, needs to happen to make it a better place? Anything? Hmm. Well, I'd say this. I I'm not going to say about where the world's going because I don't know where it's going. <laughs> but um, I, I would say that Young Men's Ultimate Weekend and a rite of passage, as we talked about it, um, is, is a great opportunity for young men and men and women, you know, to help because we are really just looking at it as um, a stepping stone, you know, for that young man who's a boy to become a young adult. And I even find today still um, young adults that are, 15, 16, 18, 20, that people still keep calling them kids, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of treat them at that level. And I remind them all the time that, no, they're young adults, because by the time you're in high school at 16, you know, you're already writing papers and you're doing research and you're going to work and you're playing a sport and, you know, you got your studies. I, I you know, I've sat on a scholarship committee and just reading the resume of these young adults who are going off to college are way more prepared than I ever was going off to college. And, you know, college was an eye opener, which a lot of us know it's tough freshman year. Um, but the tools that we're helping for these young people, as well as the tools that you as parents are bringing to these young people are what is going to help them get through freshman year in college. Mm -hmm. And by the time that there are sophomores and juniors, you will realize how much your hard work and our support have actually prepared them for life. True. And that that's probably why YMEW works. Yeah, I know that. I, I love the parts where young men will come to my office here and just say, doc, I want to thank you. And I'm sure you guys have had somebody do that with you too. It's so goosebumpy, tear jerking, rewarding to have a young man come up to me and say, I did the weekend seven years ago or 10 years ago, and it's been a life changer. I'm married now. I have kids. We all three of us on this call know young men who feel that way about YMUW. So I appreciate what you're saying there. It's like we really help move them in the right direction. How about for you, Greg, anything you want to say about Rite of Passage or the work we do or anything? Yes, I, I'm, uh, I've been uh, on men's teams for 20 years and uh, and I've worked with a lot of men in, uh, because of that and been around a lot of men and and then uh, also then joining YMUW, more men to to be with and to join in a, in a common purpose. And, uh, and out of all that, I have to say that, and I have said many times that um, that uh, being in YMBW is my favorite way to be with men, mm. has been. And I've done you know, lots of different kinds of volunteering, but um, uh, it's so rich in, in men, in, in what men want to do and like to do and, and should do. True. I, um, and I, I have found in recent, just very recently, I was, uh, with some men and there, there was one particular man that, that I, he was talking, he was having trouble. He was, I mean, he was having difficulties with life things. And, and it just came, came to me that um, he needed initiation, that he still had a lot of boyish ways about him mm -hmm. and had not let go at this age, you know, in his thirties or something, had still traits of of boyhood lingering. Yeah, and so uh, it really made me think about um, uh, that is something that needs to get taken care of. You know, when the, in in thirteen to to twenty years old, yeah. in the ages that we work with. It needs to get taken care of so it doesn't linger. I mean, there's certainly a lot of older men 
who are still carrying around childhood pain and, and confusion and never having reconciled with that or their parents and still holding on to all this stuff, you know. I agree. And I really love that in YMUW, we have a, a, a place to take care of that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important. And I, I think one of the key elements of the difference between men and boys is that they have, men have reconciled their childhood stuff. Beautiful. And are free now to just pursue being men. Maybe the men they wanna be. Absolutely. So uh, I think it's a great thing we do. Yeah. You know, one of my shaman teachers talks about, um, it's important that for, for men, adult men and women to be able to grow older and recapitulate their life, like look back and from this big perspective, have no regrets anymore. That they can contain it all. They're okay with it. And that's what I'm hearing you say, Greg, like at some point you just get to the stage where you're free. You're okay with it all, right? And when those men are around young men, just by being in their energy, it motivates them to do the right things. So what you're saying is profound and true. And we need more men in the culture to go through adult male rite of passages, like the three of us, we've been through rite of passages as, as adult men. And yes. when, you, when, right, when you get more men who've gone through rite of passages, adult men, then they're inspired, um, they're educated, they're motivated, and they know how to then initiate young men. So that's what I'm proud about YMEW. We have a lot of initiated men who are initiating young men. And I think once the culture has is saturated with that, we're gonna see way better things happening in the world. I think it'll be way more safer, way more productive because the men are happy, they're whole with themselves. They're not acting out their stuff as you're hinting at, at 60 years of age. And I think that's one of the best things that'll be for rite of passage for young men and young women, that you'll have mature, healthy adults and they'll do right by the world. That's what I see. So thank you guys for being here. I love you both. You guys are just awesome for all the work you put in and, and continue to put in. And thank you viewers for making the time to watch this. Again, if you want to get in touch with us, 800-719-9302 or email us at info at ymuw.org. Thank you so much for watching. Good to see you. Thanks.